Hi everybody and welcome back. If you have already taken one of our um, classes and if you have not, get ready to take the class called Escape and it looks like this. If you're looking at the instructions, it'll say Escape in the top right hand corner or the bottom right hand corner and the first page looks like this. It says Escape, Dream and has a um, dark blue compass on it. So. I'm going to show you the pieces that we need to get started with. The chalk ink color suggestions are um, Baja Blue, Tiramisu, Butter Pecan, and Blueberry Bliss. I think I'll show you what the colors look like before we get started. Right here we have, um, for those of you who have never used them before, super simple. Um, no right or wrong way to use them, but we do two or three different things. And if you're just doing edges of papers, this one is called Blueberry Bliss. It's one of our newest ones in the new box. If you have the brand new 2020 box of inks um, that are ice cream flavors, then this is one of the my very favorites in there. And it's kind of a deep country blue, nice soft blue. So it's going to look like this. And it's a really good one for this particular project. So see how pretty that is? And then um, one of the other colors, the new colors, is tiramisu. It says to try that one and this one. So let's look at and see what this color looks like. It's kind of a deep pumpkin pie color. I'm liking this a lot. I haven't used this one as much, but I'm seeing that it's a really pretty deep kind of orangey brown color. And then Butter Pecan, one of my favorites in the new ice cream collection. And it's just a lighter version of maybe tir tiramisu. I use this one a lot. Okay, so see how pretty those colors are and how easy it is to do this. So anytime throughout the project that you want to chalk edges, feel free to do that. I won't be doing that every single time because my piece is a sample and I'm just going to work through showing you how the pieces go together. But anytime you choose to, go ahead and add some color. Um, one of the other ones that we use a would could use a little in this is called Deep Sea. This one is a dark, deep, rich color. Looks like this. I love this one, so another one. Not in the kit, not in the uh, 2020 kit. It's one of last year's, but I still like this one a lot. So let's get busy and I'll let you know what pieces we need to start with. And um, the goals for our classes always are if we have six pages, then we will do two in class. The other four are a gift for you to take home so it just beefs up the value of your class. So anyway, we will start with page one. And this one has lots of clean lines, super simple. It has two pages that look like this. The first one will look like this. We showed you that one. Second page, this. Very simple, but we also have an addition of this cool book that is an add-on, and it will open up to a space for more photos. And that will tuck in right behind your um, actual page one into your page protector in behind your page one and then it just gives you a spot here you can pull it out add more pictures just a great way to be able to showcase more photos so to get started in your kit you should have two frames that look like this and page one and page two will have exactly the same background now if you look at the instruction sheet, and it's nice to have that out as you go along, you will notice that um, we have used, in the picture we use this side, which is a dark teal. Very pretty, but keep in mind these are all double-sided papers and you can use either side that you choose. So since the um, one in the picture has a teal, I think I'll just lay this out with the um, blue board pattern. And again, choose whichever side that you want. But page one and page two backgrounds are exactly the same, and this is a frame we'll start with. The next thing that you need is a piece that I believe it's ten and a half by ten and a half. That's close anyway. Um, looks like this. Has a nautical teal pattern on one side, 
and has lots of nautical embellishments on the other side. This is a good thing to chalk up the edges if you decide that's what you want to do. Um, you know, another color for good color for this would be Bermuda. I'm going to try Bermuda on the edges of this just so you can see what that looks like. Okay. So if you want to chalk up the edges of this before you glue it down, feel free because the edges of this is what will show onto your project. Sometimes it's kind of fun to do the corners just a little bit more than the edges. So add a little bit of adhesive and do step page one and page two at the same time because they are exactly the same as far as the background goes. Once the background is on, then it changes up a little bit and they're different from each other. So this will go over the frame, not behind the frame. You could do that if you want, but it limits your um, space for adding um, all your other pieces. So I would suggest putting it on the front of your frame, centering it from left to right and top to bottom. Okay, so that's um, background for page one and page two. So the next thing is you have a few pieces and I'm going to show you what they look like. You have, go ahead and get these out, a two by nine and a half piece. It um, has teardrops on one side, colored teardrops. The other side is white with um, blue crosshatch or a aqua colored crosshatch. It's really hard to see in the video, but it's two inches by nine inches. You'll need that piece. You have a yellow strip. That is 12 inches long by one inch wide. And you're going to take that yellow strip and actually you're just going to cut it in half. So measure out six inches. You want two pieces that are one by six. So measure out six inches and cut. Set one six inch piece aside because we'll use it on the next page. So you have a two by nine and a half white with blue cross hatches, one by six yellow, and then you have a pink strip that you need, it's 12 inches long by one inch wide, you need a piece that's four inches long and a piece that's eight inches long. And we will keep the eight inch piece for page one. And then you have a striped piece, and this one is actually two by 11, okay? So any of those pieces that you wanna chalk up edges, I would do it before you we get ready to glue things down. And anytime throughout the video, if um, I'm probably just going to walk you through all the steps and you can stop it at any point or be, being that it's a video, you can go back and check things out. So make sure you have these four pieces to start with right here. And I'm going to move them aside. And we'll start adding things to our background page, which is page one. The first piece is your white, two by nine and a half, and it's centered side by so side to side, and up maybe an inch to an inch and a half from the bottom of your, I'm going to add some color through this, only so you can see the edges and where it goes. That helps a lot. This color doesn't necessarily match, but it helps to see the edges and where it's placed, okay? So again, about an inch to an inch and a half up from the bottom. Centered side to side. And then you have your yellow one by six, and this would be a good um, 
piece to add a little bit of the butter pecan or tiramisu. Either one of those would work. The butter pecan's a little more subtle. This gives a little bit of definition to your edges. And we'll try a little bit of tiramisu just so you can see what it looks like on the yellow. See, just a little bit darker. So either one of those works. Tiramisu or butter pecan. And then this goes right about here. This end will be covered up with a strip of paper. This side will be covered up with flowers, okay? So go ahead and adhere that piece. And it's just about the top edge of the yellow piece is really close to the top edge of the white two by nine and a half strip. Should look like that. Okay, then the third piece is your striped piece. And it goes on right about here. It's in about two and a quarter inches from the right hand side. So if you want to measure it, it's exactly two and a quarter inches in. So here we go, right about here. And again, it's centered top to bottom. And I would suggest some um, Blueberry Bliss on the edges of this piece of paper right here. That's a really good one. Helps it to stand out and it's exactly the same color as some of these pretty blues in here. And then the very last piece is your one by eight pink strip that is butted up right against the edge of your striped piece. And again, it looks like it's down just a little bit closer to the bottom than it is the top. And if you want to, you could tuck this under just a little bit. Next piece you have in your kit a 6x8. It's a die cut and also a 5x7 die cut. The 6x8 is a teal color and has the board pattern, blue board pattern on the back side six by eight and then the five by seven is white with the blue cross hatches and it has the teardrops on the other side so chalk up this white piece and the blue piece i you could almost use the deep sea on the edges of this blue this teal you can use the baja blue or bora bora that works really well too but this is just a little bit darker and shows up just a little bit better so totally up to you Choose one of your tropical colors and add some color to the edges of this. And again, I'm not going to completely chalk it because mine is just a sample. And this one, I would think that, I'm going to try Bermuda on it. Nope, I don't want that. I want um, I think I'm going to try Blueberry Bliss. It will lend itself to that color a little bit better. Okay. Just gently go over those edges and all the way around and adhere it to your mat. Adhere the five by seven to your six by eight teal mat. And if you can't quite see where this mat is going to go, take a look at your instruction sheet and it will show you that it ends up about right here. Okay. 
Now I'm going to set this aside for just a second because I want to show you the other pieces that you need to finish this kit out, or this page out. You have two white tags, little rectangle holes at the top, and again, they are the white with the blue cross hatch. Backsides are teardrops, and you need two turquoise tags. Front are turquoise, backsides are kind of an aqua color. And you need a chipboard white piece. Looks like this. Has a little wave top. And you need a chip. You need a paper, dark blue paper um, compass that fits right over the front of your white chipboard. So now we left the edges of these white, and that's totally up to you. On the blue, we added a little bit of color, and I would suggest maybe the Bermuda on the edges of the turquoise. I keep calling it blue, it's not, it's turquoise. And if you wanted to do the edges of, so take a look. This is with white, white edges, if you leave them just white. But if you want to add a little bit of color, just a little bit along the edges like this. Just a little bit, just to give, because most of this white is not going to show anyway because you have your turquoise in front of it. Then you will glue turquoise to white, matching the little rectangle hole at the top and centering it onto your white piece. Same with the big tag. You have two finished tags, and then you are going to add the compass onto the white chipboard backer. And there you have three tags assembled. And then you're going to add, and take your blue striped ribbon, it's 12 inches long, just cut it perfectly in half. And I like to cut a nice sharp point, a nice sharp diagonal on each ribbon. And sometimes when that little hole is tiny on your pieces, which this kind of is, it will thread through much easier if you have a nice sharp point on your ribbon. So add that ribbon, tie a single knot. It's nice um, grow grain that has a nap to it so that it's not going to come undone. You don't need a double knot, you just need a single one. Clip your ends and you do that to both pieces. And then you will have You will put your biggest blue tag on first, kind of tilts off to the left. Your smaller tag on second, tilts off to the right, and keep in mind that you may want to leave this free so that you can get a photo in later. So just a little adhesive at the bottom probably. And then your compass tucks in right in the very front of those other two tags. And then you have a couple of flowers and a couple of little um, leaves that go up. And I'm going to show you on the flowers. We like to just hold it just lightly in your hand like this. I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see better. And just gently, gently, gently add color to the petal, the ends of the petals. And as you do that, as you just keep adding a little layer after layer, it kind of just automatically gets right into those little grooves and crevices. 
You do have little tails that some people like to use to get into those tails, but I kind of like to just take it and gently add color a little at a time until you get what you want, and then it just see how it just automatically ends up going down into those little cracks and crevices of this gorgeous little flower. Now, say you wanted to add just a second color. You've got all this pretty Bermuda color onto your white paper, and Let's try a little bit of Blueberry Bliss on the ends. Oh, that's kind of fun too. So you could use two or three colors. You want to make sure that if you do that, you use your lighter color first and then your darker color. That way it doesn't mess up your um, ink pads. So here's a second one. We're going to chalk it up just a little bit. And just for fun, I'll try some deep sea on it, on the ends. I really like this color too. It's a nice deep dark color. And then make your little flower petals cooperate a little bit in the center. And then in your kit, you have a little packet like this with some brads and buttons and you're going to use a button in the center of each flower and your little flower looks like this. So you have a double flower on page one and you have a single flower on page one and when you get done it will look just like this. The only other thing we have for page one is um, you have two little words called dream and escape and if you aren't happy with the colors of them you can add some color we use we left them white but if you want to add maybe they're on teal paper so I would suggest something dark like maybe deep sea or blueberry bliss so see how you just press that color in and it immediately changes its entire color to a dark blue. So there you have it. So you can decide if you want to leave it white or if you want to add some color to um, by just sponging in the color to your little words. Okay, that's everything for page one. So let's take a look at page two. Again, simple. We have three photo mats. We have a little bit of banner piecing here, so a spray of um, leaves and a flower the word explore. And then we'll show you how to do the little book after that. So let's look here at page two. See what we need. So you should have already added to this frame for page two, built yourself, your background will look like this. And then you have a blue piece. It's about 11 and a half inches long by a couple inches wide. It's dark blue on one side and a wavy pattern on the other side. That will go on next. And you have um, a turquoise banner piece. That goes on over your blue. And then you have another striped piece. It's probably about seven inches long by an um, inch and a half, two inches wide. Actually, I'll tell you exactly what it is. It is eight inches long by two inches wide. So eight inches long by two inches wide. And it basically goes right about here. And again, you can chalk up those edges and I would suggest maybe the uh, Blueberry Bliss or Deep Sea.
your yellow one by six that you cut and left over from page one goes about here and your pink one by four left over from page one goes here and then you have a sheet of embellishments that look like this for this page only the rest these other two are for one of the other um, pages that you'll do later this is called moments and you cut that out and it goes right here overlapping the pink okay and then the word explorer is the same thing we left it white but if you want to add some I mean you could even add coconut to that let me see if I can find mine coconut is a white and if you wanted to make it even whiter you can just press some coconut in now keep in mind that for some reason the white takes a little longer to dry than anything else but um, if, once you get it on there just get it onto your page and then let it dry later and you have three photo mats and Three of them are three and a half by five, look like this. Move this out of the way for a second. Three and a half by five, three pieces. These go in the back. And then you have three pieces that are three and a quarter by four and three quarter. So locate those. The three and a quarter white, three and a quarter by four and three quarter white goes on a three and a half by five teal color and then they add to your project just like this and then the only other thing that you have is make sure you get your word explorer on your moments your little leaves and your single flower with a button and page two is completely done Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do this little book that we talked about earlier. And it will have a little piece of baker's twine. Two little, um, I don't know what you call those, those little round circles with brads, clasps of some sort. And then you open it up and you have space for more pictures. I'm going to show you where these score lines go. So get out your full sheet of striped paper. It's striped on one side and pink on the other. And we're going to score on the pink side. And depending on which way you want your stripes to go, ours are going vertical. So if you want yours to go vertical, keep in mind that you need to slide it into your trimmer or put it in your scoreboard or score pal so that your stripes are vertical. And I'm missing my trimmer, so I need to locate that before we can move on. Here it is. So if you have a score pal scoreboard, it makes it so much simpler, but if not, I'll show you how you can score with your trimmer. And it looks like this. And the very first score line is going to be at one half inch. So all you're going to do is slide your paper in so that you're at the half inch mark. And using a bone folder, um, a credit card, room key, anything with a, um, an edge that's not going to actually cut your paper. And then when you go to score, score gently. Some bone folders are much sharper than others and they'll cut right through your paper. So just a medium score line and that's at a half an inch. Now you're going to go in two and a quarter inches. Two and a quarter inches. Just move it on in. Two and a quarter inches and score again. 
And again, score lightly so you don't tear your paper. The next score will be at seven inches. So pull it on in until you're at seven inches. And the last score line will be at 11 and a half. So that will give you a half an inch at the end after this last score line. So then you'll take it out and fold along these score lines. And the half inch on each end, let's do that first. Go ahead and fold those in, half inch on each end. You're going to fold along the score line. And you can use your bone folder to crease it down a little bit if you choose to. It helps to make it lay down a little flatter. And then you're going to adhere these half inch flaps pink to pink, okay? Adhere these half inch flaps down, that, making sure you're gluing pink to pink. Should look like this right now. And then you will fold along the remaining score lines. Here's your two and a quarter score line, okay? Here's your seven inch score line. And at this point, it should look like this, just a cute little book. Okay, so now you need to um, locate your little round circles and your brads that are in your kit. You have several brads and you need two for this part of the project. And if you measure down about five, five and a quarter inches and lay out your white piece. You want to make sure that it's not hanging off of this edge, but just inside that edge, just slightly like this, okay? So you're going to use this as a template, punch yourself a hole, add this with a brad, So you have got one little round piece on. Okay, so there you go. Looks like this if it's opened up. Now we need to add another. And I would measure down the same length. It's somewhere towards the center. The same length from the top to over here. Okay. And basically you're just going to make A little dot. So you can see where you're going to punch that next hole because you don't want it to be behind here because these two things will work together, okay? So it needs to look something like this when you're done. So there is your first one that you put on. And here is the second one. So looking at it from the back side, this is what it will end up looking like. Okay. So tuck this flap in first, this flap in second. Add your first circle with the brad. Add your second circle with the brad. Making sure that you're not um, tucking it underneath the flap. So that means it will go right about here. Punch yourself a little hole with a push pin or a paper piercer. Add this piece with the brad. And then you have a little piece of baker's twine tiny little piece of baker's twine. And so all you're going to do is 
wrap this around this first this first circle and then when you want to seal it off close it up you wrap it around the second circle okay so I'm going to show you a little bit more now about what happens on the inside you have um, several pieces left over that are in a die cut that looks like this okay you have two pieces that are four four by five and a half and you have three pieces that are three and a half by three and a half and these are your photo mats for this little book And as you can see, the three, three and a half by three and a half go on the right and between the score lines and the little edge of the paper. And the other two pieces go over here. So you have one more piece to this so that you'll actually know what, how to pull it out of. And this piece will fold perfectly in half. Be gentle because these little letters are fragile. So when you go to fold it in half, so then this piece will clamp down over. Part of it will go in behind, okay? Part will go on behind, part will go in front. But this part that says more photos will stick up over the top so that you can, when you tuck it down in your page protector, When you go to tuck it down in your page protector, it goes in behind your first page, and this will stick up above and still be protected by your album because your album's always a little bit bigger. But this just lets people know that you can pull this out, okay, and add more pictures. The only thing I forgot to mention is that we used a scrap of paper, white paper, to go in behind the word more photos. And that way it makes it show up a lot better. So that's all for page one and page two. I'll just briefly show you what three and four and five and six looks like. And again, once you get all of page one and two done, that uses up lots and lots of pieces of paper. So then you will use your cutting diagrams. You have several. We try to keep the cutting diagrams for the remaining pages so that we don't have to spend so much time in class um, cutting paper. So we try to do the cutting and the lasers and all that stuff so that it makes it easier for you. But keep your papers because you have cutting diagrams. They're not hard. Just be aware that I'm not there to hand you another piece of paper and cut carefully. Read the instructions really carefully. And um, anyway, you have several cutting diagrams. Keep those, cut your pieces, and then everything else will go on pages one and two. And let's see here if I can. Okay, here's three, four, five, and six. And this little quote talks about um, when I want to travel, I want to do it all. I may never come back to this corner of the world again, so it's now or never. I want to know where the path leads, and I want to take the road less traveled. I want to meet new people and go away with a better understanding of the way things are. But most of all, I want to remember this journey of the heart long after my footprints on the dusty roads are gone. So thank you for joining us, and I um, hope you have fun finishing out all these little pieces. And again... I know I went fast, but this with a video, you can stop it wherever you want. You can go back. So have fun with this and have um, a great summer. Use these up and have some adventures anyway. See you later.